spending over $300 at the local home improvement store on just brackets for a cat walkway? Nope. Spending $30 in 3D printer materials to make your own? Just do it! I save hundreds of dollars every single week thanks to 3D printing, and some weeks, as a side gig, I also make hundreds of dollars. Spending $200 on custom automotive parts? <clears throat> Spending $10 on 3D printer materials? Yes. Have people want a copy of what you made for themselves and pay you $200 each time? <coughs> right now, I'm 3D printing my own kitchen countertops because $60 per square foot my advertiser friendly content. I'm just gonna spend $60 and that's it. It took me a couple years, but I finally see the future where 3D printers are a common household appliance like a waffle iron or a coffee maker. Most people who approach me with an interest in 3D printing are mostly interested in making some money as a side hustle. I've done that myself and made thousands along the way, but I've actually since given it up because I hate working with customers. One particular client wanted some custom lettering for their vehicle and in several emails, I confirmed the exact size of what the letters were going to be and when I printed them and handed them off to the customer, they were happy, until several days later when they complained that it wasn't the size they wanted despite the paper trail confirming those measurements. And so I emailed them back and said, hey, what size would you like them reprinted in? Because you know, the materials are cheap and the design work's already done. And I never got a response. So that's a customer that could have been happy if they just owned a measuring stick of some kind. My view has now shifted to, I think the real value of having a 3D printer at home lies in the lifestyle changing amount of cost savings and increased customization. One of my biggest customers lately is actually my dad, the person to whom I owe me learning 3D design in the first place, almost 20 years ago. He needed a pair of 2x3 rain gutters to join at an angle and exit to a single larger pipe. It took about 20 minutes from concept to design, used $3 in material, printed overnight while I slept, and now a new object exists that will prevent the corner of his house from sinking further, worsening the cracks in the walls. That's 20 minutes of my time to prevent house foundation issues. I don't have a degree in economics, but I think that's a pretty good deal. I've also done gutter joints under the ground, duplicated keys to their pool cover, and I would have made a gargoyle for their roof. Mom was okay with it, but Dad just wanted a simple rain diverter instead. You can check out this video up here for more cool stuff I've printed for my dad for Father's Day. Does your local library or school have a 3D printer? There's a good chance they do. Every year, we have tens of thousands of students with new 3D modeling and printing capabilities. Industrial applications are already on board. Porsche prints pistons. Say that three times fast. The consumer side is next to experience low-cost local manufacturing. Here's why 3D printing at home will not only save you hundreds, but also change the global job field. Let's examine one particular object, just a red utensil holder. To buy one, an engineer has to design it, a factory has to build it, a distribution center coordinates distribution, a shipping truck delivers it closer to you, a warehouse stores it until a local store needs it or you order it online, and then a delivery truck either delivers it to your home or the local store that you then have to drive through to go pick it up, and then all the packaging you then throw away because it just was there to preserve the product during transit. And now you finally have this object weeks or months after it was actually made. With a 3D printer at home, that changes. An engineer designs it and it could be someone like me who uploads their designs for free on websites such as 3dpc.xyz. You download the design and it's ready by morning. 
Or, you know, just cut out the engineer entirely and design it yourself. Look at all these people you don't have to pay anymore. Imagine if 10% of the population 3D printed 10% of the stuff they need at home. Wikipedia says that UPS employs 240,000 drivers. 1% of that is 2,400 drivers out of a job. If the rate of people printing, or the amount that they print, goes up, then you might actually see entire businesses go under. Downloading existing designs will probably be about 10 to 20% of what you print on your printer, but that's not really enough that I would recommend buying a printer for just other people's designs. The real usefulness of a printer comes from your own designs. Like, what's the point of buying plumbing tools if you're going to hire a plumber to come over and fix any pipes that might break? So to recap, it's quicker, it's cheaper, and you have access to much cooler designs. It's a no-brainer. And while you're not going to be 3D printing a pizza in your home anytime soon, for a lot of other stuff, it's the way to go. Adopting this DIY attitude has saved me so much money. My wife can stay home. It means that what I make on this channel with just a four-digit number of subscribers plus a part-time job is enough to sustain us. It means I can have a skee-ball machine that now costs two to three digits instead of four or five digits. Big savings like this mean that I can afford to buy tacos on not just a Tuesday. Here is just a small fraction of the stuff that I have 3D printed for myself or some cool places that I've worked in the past. There's websites you can go to where it takes a picture and turns that into varying thickness of walls in a 3D file so that you can have a lamp with a picture in it. So that's a lamp with one of my wedding pictures in it. Back when I was daily driving a Threadripper 1950X, I had this computer here with an RTX 2080, and rather than, you know, stick in a conventional case, this is actually a mining frame where I 3D printed mounts for all of these fans, and at the bottom, I 3D printed a couple hands that hold up the GPU. Personally, I think it's one of the best looking computers I've ever had, and I kind of miss it. Back when my home theater computer was Mini ITX, I had it in a GameCube case. Back when I used to teach LEGO Robotics at a school, transporting the battery packs back and forth, the little orange knobs would get bumped one way or the other, and it would just kill those six AA batteries, which gets pretty expensive when you're losing a hundred of those a month. In case your NAS actually doesn't fit hard drives because it's for mining, you can actually print adapters so that you can fit a bunch of hard drives in there instead of video cards. And then for doing all the curtain rods at home, I 3D printed some TPU, which is polyurethane. It's kind of squishy, rubbery, and it allows me to clamp onto a pipe so that it doesn't go skating off when I saws all through it. If you want to rack mount a bunch of Raspberry Pis, no better way to do it than with 3D printing. I actually built a CNC router that I later sold out of mostly 3D printed parts. All the red you see, is 3D printed. At one point my glasses broke and the screw was completely stripped on the frame so I just glued it together and used this clamp that I then made a custom white piece for so it would actually hold the glasses together and cure. Of course the cat shelves that's gonna be its own video at some point. And if you haven't seen my previous video where I did a Bob Ross impersonation, my AC system $7,800 was ruined within weeks or a couple months of moving into my new house because a critter got into the HVAC system and chewed on some wires. So I just 3D printed a little guard to go over it so I'm not going to be out a whole nother AC system at some point in the future. 3D printing is actually really useful for assisting other manufacturing techniques. For instance, I have a router with a plunge adapter, and instead of just freehand cutting a handle in this piece of wood, I 3D printed a stencil, and thanks to a flush trim bit, I can literally trace custom shapes cut into wood. 
pretty nice. One of my oldest projects on this channel was 3D printing an adapter that would hold a couple of 120mm fans either below or above your graphics card, and it actually helped to cool it down a lot. One of the things I 3D printed that initially got my now wife's attention was a 3D printed tie. One of my cousins was a little rough on his Stormtrooper figure, so I 3D printed a droid head and gave him a Lego hand for those missing parts. At a time when so many people don't make as much as they used to, or you just plain old don't want to spend as much, or you want greater control over the design, I want to help anyone who's willing to learn. In the past I've done some 3D printing time lapses, showing the design of what I make, but realistically condensing a couple hours into a few minutes isn't really enough to teach people how to make something. So I'm going to slow down some future videos, kind of like how I did the Bob Ross one, so that you can kind of follow along and learn how to design some of these things in 3D as well. So bookmark my 3D printing playlist over here, or subscribe to this channel, just saying. Think of your grandparents who are stuck paying $200 a month for cable just because they don't know how to work out YouTube. Why waste half your paycheck on ignorance when you can spend it on fun instead? This has been a video I've been trying to make for months and never really found the right words to say it. Hopefully these words turned out good, if not then I'll make sure to post plenty of revisions of what I wish I'd said in the comments below. But until then, make sure to subscribe so that you can actually learn some of these things and download some of the things that I'll engineer in the future. Ask questions in the comments if you're wondering how to get started, and I'll see you in the next one.